Hello, today we are at the Computer History Museum archives, confronted with a familiar problem. We need to scan old computer documentation. You see, scanning documents with museum archival quality is a very large amount of work, and it will take the museum many years, volunteers and significant grants to complete the scanning of its collection. But we urgently need access to some of our large format IBM 1401 documents, with quality just good enough so we can use them. So we have decided to lend a hand and use our newly acquired CZUR scanners. At $300 for a complete system, we don't expect museum archival quality. But this promises to be better, cheaper and faster than what we have used so far to scan awkward sized documents. They are the ALDs. Automat automated logic diagram. So, you no, know, in 1950 something they had CAD, and that was done. I, I read the the paper. It was actually done originally on on tube computers. Yeah, this right. is 705 or four. Right, right, right. So, who said they didn't have CAD in the 1950s? And over there, I am going to open my new scanner. All right, so here we go. I have a, 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 a CCUR Xur scanner. How did you, I don't know how to figure out the name for that thing. So whatever's not taken. Xur. It, it's a Xur. This is so well packed. I am impressed. Here we go. Oh, I got the side lights. Yes. I did. This was originally an Indiegogo funded project, but you wouldn't know. It comes packaged with the attention to detail you expect from an Apple product. It includes supplemental side lights, a foot pedal, finger cuts, and even a nice black mat. And a scanning mat and software. Those are the... Wow, yeah, I got the lights. Those are the lights. There is the thing in question, you have the LED lighting on the camera and here are uh, three laser line generators that they use to straighten up the, the paper scan. In what we hope is the next best thing besides a real book scanner, the system uses laser lines to sense and flatten out the curvature of the book pages in software. Setup was super easy. Just unfold the scanner, which by the way doubles as a lamp, set up your mat, add the magnetically held side light, load the software, and you are pretty much good to go. Okay. That works. Oh, we click scan now. See on the yeah. So I, I then I, I press the foot pedal. Is that, is that it? Okay. Foot pedal. Why not? You see the scan lines flip there. All right. You can't see them on the screen. So you have yeah, to watch. yeah, yeah. And then here's the process. Image. Okay, so hand me it. Hand me the page now. To scan that odd IBM format, we had to take the pages out of the binder and scan sideways, not really using the book flattening feature. But that went surprisingly fast for a hand feed job. The software recognizes the boundary of your document automatically, so you don't have to worry about centering at all. The only post-processing I had to do is rotate the images. Then I simply chose to export them as a PDF. Then I can look at it yeah. over here. Yep. And wow. So it, it didn't flatten it out because I was doing it the wrong direction. Yeah. But yep. this was done in a couple minutes. I, I just click the OCR yep. button and it OCR'd it and I'm looking at the PDF I try to yep. see if it got it right and yeah yep. yep. no, no errors so we got our documents scanned in no time maybe not museum archival quality though I had seen much worse but the information was made available and we could post it online the same day. So here we are back in the lab where I have installed it as my per permanent place. And I wanted to show you a little bit more details here. Uh, so to turn it on, you push it 
for three seconds and it comes in the lamp mode uh, which is I guess nice if you want a lamp but that's not really what I want so you have to press, press it once more turn it into a scanner mode and when you do that the pictures comes up at the top right there and you can you, you have a little LCD put at, at the top of your, your book and I'm trying a bit of a uh, more challenging thing here this is uh, a lab book I wanted to digitize some pages I put everything on my lab book this is a good habit from Bell Labs uh, and this one has no, some very noticeable uh, bump in the pages, it's very curved, it's not very contrasty, this has been done with a pencil. It's a fairly large area, so you just go over here and do scan. And there you go, it finds it, and all you have to do really is to put the book on the little middle of the line right here. And it does all the rest for you. So this would be the foot pedal. I have it here so I can demonstrate. It goes click. You got it. And it separated the left and the right page. And you can you can see first that it dealt fairly well with the page being extremely curved. So if you look at how the page is, it's really bad. And it flattened it pretty good. Uh, so that works well. And but you can see here. There's a little bit of gray uh, here where it, where it gets uh, on on the original. There's less contrast, and once again, this is really very challenging, right? This is uh, written with a pencil, and you can see on the image, it's uh, no, it gets a little washed out. Uh, you can do a little bit more contrast. You can. I'm not sure what the thickness is would be the, oh okay it kind of tr tries to trace around your letters so so you have some slight changes you can do but it's uh, see it, it, it's I can't I, it's not like I have control of the gamma which is really what I would like here and here's another scanned page and uh, this one was probably written in pen rather than in pencil, so it comes out better. Let's try something else here. That's an old national semiconductor data book, something that has text and small table. That's challenging. So, large format, lots of curvature, yellowed paper, uh, little tables, all kind of challenging stuff in here. See how it does. Click. So see what it did. And here you go. You got the small table, no problem. And you got the the data page. And here you can start to see the the limit here, but on the original, it's super extra small. It's just minuscule. So just for kicks, let's try to OCR the whole thing. That's going to be interesting. OCR, what's it going to do? Chinese simplified English. English. PDF quality. We definitely want high on that one. Export file. So it's going to be a PDF, an OCR PDF. See. Okay, okay, is it done? I think it's done. Is it? Yeah, did it. And that is totally selectable now. Let's see what it did. Work bad. Yeah, so it made this. Uh, a search PDF, searchable PDF. The memory contents of the individual requirement must be submitted on a tape cut format as shown below. Not one mistake. So that's pretty good. Um, let's see what it does if I make it a Word document. It's going to be interesting. Word OCR in English. Size auto. Alright.
Okay, does the word docked and that disappears? It just means you need to click it away. That's a little weird, but fine. And here it is. And on my very old version of Word, I would say it looks spanking beautiful. Look at that, it found that the text was vertical right here. Now this is totally editable. What do you do with the table? How can I zoom in that thing? Okay. And that it took as a picture. Well, that's not bad at all. No errors here. Well, it's basically error free as far as I can tell. It is a very good editable representation of the original document. I'm impressed. Look at that. That is... Uh, no, that's, that's exactly how it is in the original. It has this weird... It is a very weird pagination error. <laughs> so, or it's a text setting error, paragraph error. And that it kept as a picture. I recognize that was a picture. Okay, uh, uh, this is this is quite impressive. Let's try this HP 1000 manual um, because it has pages in color and grays. Let's see what it does. Oh, I can see some glare right here because this is glossy paper. So this is one that's not going to work with the top light. This must be what the side lights are for. Let's try it again with the side lights. Much better. Uh, okay, I have my mask in it, so it's a little confused. Scan this one. Okay, that's what you use this, the side lights for, the reflective stuff. Beautiful. Fantastic. It, it found out that it was color and it, it did it all excellently well. For our last challenge, this is the beauty and the bane of the HP early documentation that it has this beautiful fold-out schematics or diagrams and nope, they won't fit in one frame. So, if you look at it, you have this one and this one, so I'll, I have to scan it in two and that's my schematic it's kind of flat not really flat this one would really benefit putting uh, you know an under glass pane or plexiglass pane yes you can see it flattened it a bit but not perfectly same here in the middle that's pretty flat and the top you can see the paper not completely flattened that. So I think for for this case, as you really need to flatten it out under a piece of glass of plastic. This is from this is a cheap piece of glass from from a, a cheap frame. Uh, it's not even very clean. That's where the the side lights come into play because if you put the top light, that's what you get. You get a big nice reflection on it. And if you get the side light, boom, gone. And obviously, you know, my pane of glass is too small. Yeah. And now it's it's nice and flat. Uh, this is my, my glass that's not clean, so ignore that. But uh, there is a fold right here. You don't see it. The fold goes right here. And now it's under the glass and it's all perfectly flattened out. So yeah, there, there are limits to the miracles you can do on flattening stuff. Uh, but there's ways to go around it. So all in all, I'm, I'm, no, I couldn't be happier with the purchase of this little miracle scanner. And when you're done, you just go boop and you close it and either you reclaim your space or you have a nice lamp. 
Very nice. 